Welcome to page 9, where we'll be going beyond the headlines to bring you the story behind the story. This week we're delving into an interesting story about low-income DC students and GW. It's one of the most pervasive problems in higher education, is getting low-income students to apply and actually get into selective universities. Now GW, a number of DC public high schools, and a local organization are trying to tackle the problem together. This week we're joined by Allison Kowalski, a Hatchet News Editor, uh, who jumped into this story. So, Ali, one of the really interesting things here is that we know that a lot of low-income students are actually uh, not applying to selective universities. So what are some of the main roadblocks here, keeping them, or, or whether you know, in their minds, or, or just keeping them from applying in general to universities like GW? Sure, so there's just the general infrastructure that's set up at some of these schools where some high schools don't have that many high school counselors and college counselors to guide them through the application process. Maybe their families, a lot of family members haven't gone through the process before, so they're trekking through this the first time on their own. And then there's just the idea of the more high achieving ones who do have the family members to support them. They just don't want to stay close to home. They don't want to go to a school that feels like it's right in their backyard. And, and that's one of the things that uh, one of the students that you interviewed talked about. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit more about how she, she was talking about how she doesn't want to stay in DC, but her mind kind of changed with GW. You know, what, what was she really telling you that's not in this story? Sure, so there's a Trachtenberg scholarship which offers a full ride, which started to pique her interest. Mm -hmm. But once Serve Your City organized this event last week that brought her on campus and had her taking a campus tour, meeting different student leaders from different group organizations on campus, then she was able to finally get a picture of what it would be like living on campus. And, and what was she really telling you uh, in, in terms of her experience so far and, and why she really wanted to go beyond DC? Sure, she wanted to leave home. She wants to get away. She wants to have that experience of, she said, I don't want to just go to college. I want to have an experience and I want to live and make my own story. She wants to be part of a dance team. She doesn't want to just take classes. Mm -hmm. She wants the full college experience, not just meet that low bar of just being a statistic of graduating and attending college. Right, because a lot of these DC public schools encourage them to at least apply to some local DC schools, mm -hmm. community colleges and, and University of DC, but she wants a little bit more than that. And, and so how did it help her to also be able to see a lot of minority students who are interacting with these 60 students who came on campus, um, you know, interacting with them, what, what did that kind of change in, in their minds? I know that you talked to a lot of uh, the high school students on the tour. Yeah, I talked to a lot of the high school students, and for them, it's just the idea of once you see something, then it becomes real. All of them have the same sentiment. Once I saw the dorm that I could potentially live right. in, then you can start visualizing yourself in the space. This is where I would sleep. This is where I would work. Walking around Gelman Library and saying, like, oh, I could study here. This is where my friends and I would go. Mm -hmm. It just visualizes it for you, and that really makes such a difference. And I was talking to Carrie Freeman, the president of the Black Student Union, and she said students from the Eastern High School had similar concerns, just like any freshman, sophomore, junior, senior taking these tours, you know, where do I go for classes, how do you deal with roommate conflict, but there's mm -hmm. also the question at GW of, oh, not everyone here looks like me, mm -hmm. like, I'm somebody who is African American and all these students seem like they're white, Caucasian, not minority students, right. how would I fit in here in this environment? Fascinating. Well, we know that GW admissions counselors are also heading out to DC public schools for the first time this year, really getting out there and helping them with college applications, not just to GW, but other schools. Mm -hmm. uh, so really interesting developments and in getting low-income students uh, to schools like GW. So thank you so much, Allison. Uh, and that'll do it for us this week at page nine. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.